Hi there. Good evening, afternoon, morning, depending on where you're at there. Thank you for joining us here for this webinar on ghost busting. So um, I guess we'll do a little bit of story behind this whole thing and how I learned what I've learned with this. And then we will dive into the tools that we use, uh, the physical tools that we'll use for um, learning how to do this tonight. If you are here live, you are welcome to jump into the chat here. Um, also, if you have any questions as we're moving along here, please do drop them over in the questions tab. Otherwise, uh, this will be recorded for everybody to access. So, if you are new to our webinars, we like to always start out by going into the heart space. So I will walk you through a simple three breath technique of moving the consciousness from the head and into the heart. And especially when we're doing this style of work, it is um, necessary for you to be out of fear and, and judgment. And so in order to be out of fear and judgment, it is moving from the head back into the heart. So we'll do this with a simple three breath technique. And I'm just checking chat. People from everywhere around the world, thank you all for being here live tonight. All right, so we're gonna go into the heart space, simply putting your attention onto your physical heart. And it's easier if you close your eyes, however you wish to do this. Closing your eyes and put your attention to your physical heart where we find our light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that loving energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Next, we connect with the heart of creation. However you see that, source, soul, creator, God, breathing in that light of creation into the heart. And this third breath and the Trinity breath is breathing in the energy of both creation and the earth into your heart at the same time. And it's the Trinity breath, not only because of the three breaths, but it is bringing in the energy of the earth, the energy of creation, and that is mixing that with the energy of you, your light. As we take in those three breaths, it moves the consciousness from the head back into the physical heart where we began. All right, so some story time on ghost busting. So it was, um, my daughter is now 11 and a half years old. When she was born, she was having night terrors. And I, you know, I always felt you know, at the time I was, you know, I was not in my awakening path while well, I was in my awakening path, but not, not there. And so I didn't believe in, you know, ghosts that never came to my, to my thoughts or my mind. But yet the house that we were living in was actually in, in, built in the 1880s and it was a brothel in this tiny little town in this tiny little town that burned down like three times old west town um and i always felt that there was something you know not quite right there i would get the the chills sometimes you know and just felt like there was somebody watching me and you know just felt kind of strange at times and not understanding or knowing what that was well babies are especially sensitive to uh, what we call waywards you can call it a ghost but we we like the more politically correct term of wayward that it is a disincarnate being a person who has died who is searching for their way home we'll get more into that whole thing but at the time, my sister and my mom were doing this, aka ghost busting, spirit release, and I never knew about it. But I approached them with uh, the whole issue of my daughter waking up in the middle of the night just screaming. And, you know, and she was still, you know, just months 
weeks, months old. And so they told me about ghosts, about waywards and the attachments. And um, <clears throat> I was just starting out in, in my path and I had the Omega wand. It is a, well, it's a, it's a steel wand filled with crystals and it produces a piezoelectric energy. That was one of my first energy tools. And I borrowed my sister's Omega wand because I could almost feel the energy from it. You know, I was still not sensitive. And one night when my daughter woke up screaming, she's probably maybe two months old at the most, I took out the wand and I started waving it around the room. And it's the first time I could see, I could see just several like figures, beings that were just backing up and they just left the space and my daughter stopped crying. And I was pretty blown away. So I, um, I decided to start to um, work with this whole concept. So I started to delve into the research because I was very science minded at the time. And in the UK it was about the only place that I could really find books and information written on it. And in the UK, they call it spirit release. And, you know, they go through the steps of how you can, can work with them. You can talk with them. Um, to help release them and help them cross over to the other side. So anyway, that was my first experience with with uh, working with waywards with ghosts uh, because of my daughter being sensitive to them and night terrors. So as we move along, um, I'll just tell you a little bit about what we see a disincarnate, a wayward as being. So when you die, a lot of cultures will see that there is a light that this light to home, let's just call it to source, whatever you want to call it, to home, that this light is open for anywhere from three to nine days. That's, um, you know, in different cultures, that's how they see it, is that that light is there for just a certain amount of time, and then it shuts. And then you have the free will choice, because we are free will beings, we have the free will choice, whether we go into the light or we stay. So we see that that light after you die is open for nine days. That's how long we see it as being there. And then after that, it's closed down. Then you're stuck here until somebody can cross you over. Now, an archangel or somebody like that can just come in and cross you over. The current beings have to be the ones who assist these disinclined beings from crossing over. Sorry about that. Our internet flashed in and out. So, um, why do people choose to stay? Well, in the United States, the number one reason that a person decides to stay here instead of crossing over to the light is the fear of hell or a punishment. Number one reason in the United States, I think also in the UK, uh, that they found for the reason that a person does not cross over. Um, the number two reason, which is what I run into the most, is, is that a person decides that they want to stay to help a loved one. So a lot of times we'll see somebody walking around with uh, the, the spirit attachment, the, the ghost attachment of a great-great-great-grandmother. So she died. And she chose to stick around for all of her family that was still here. She's like, nope, i got to stay here and help them. I can't leave. So she stays. Everybody else, when they die, they're like, oh, heck with this. We're, we're going to light. We're going home. They cross over. And then she's stuck here. So in order for a, a ghost or a wayward to exist in this plane, they need the energy from people or places. So a lot of times you will have an energetic attachment that goes to that wayward on a person that could have been passed down through the family lineage. We've seen that quite often, that it is a family member from lifetime, you know, from generations ago that had passed on but chose to stay here.
and then they just move down the family. The other thing that you see with a ghost or a wayward is that there are certain pockets or places where there is a lot of them. They travel on these geomagnetic lines, kind of like you hear the ley line, but it's a geomagnetic line that the ghost or wayward will travel on because they can receive the energy from those geomagnetic lines. A lot of times you'll find places where there's an abnormal number of these ghosts or waywards and where they're trapped. They just get caught in a space. And that is because these intersecting of geomagnetic lines creates a vortex that can actually trap beings there. So you'll find, um, so people who do this professionally will find maybe a house that just is constantly new ghosts keep coming in. And that is because it is on those intersection of one of those geomagnetic lines as it flows through. So the ghosts just stay there and inhabit that space. Um, and then going back to the reasons, the third reason that we see that, um, that a disincarnate chooses not to cross over is that they don't realize they're dead at the time. You know, um, there's been an instance of like a plane crash in, in one of those spirit release books that I read in the UK about a plane crash. And there was a whole bunch of people just right there that stayed there and they didn't realize they had died. Um, so when I first started to work with ghost waywards, I could not see them, but yet I could feel them. I could, I could sense them. And once you start to sense or feel or see or interact with them, they just find you um, because they're like, oh, hey, this guy can see us. So they, they, they attract to those people who can see them. So with kids, you know, kids especially, they, they still, they don't have all their programming and filters going on. And, you know, they, they can see these subtle things. And so a lot of kids can actually see ghost waywards as can pets. When I first started crossing over ghost waywards, I always got the confirmation from my dog at the time. She could always see them. And then when I would put a big portal, uh, open up a big space on the wall or had Archangel Michael open it, and then I would ask that wayward to go to the light, <laughs> it was fun because my dog and me, I could always watch the dog, watch the wayward go up and into the light and then gone. And then she just went back to her business. So really an interesting um, thing. And it's a great confirmation. You get the confirmation from your pets, you know, about the work that you're doing. So what exactly is a ghost or a wayward? Um, basically, you know, a lot of people like to get messages from ghost waywards. I, I don't really. When, let's say you're an asshole in life, you're an asshole in death. You, you, you are, you're like your personality, you're like your human. And um, you have that limited knowledge and connection as, as you do as just a mundane human walking around. You, you, you have that same box that you live in. And so a ghost, it doesn't have any higher knowing. When a person crosses over, checks in, comes back, that's what we would call a spirit, somebody that is not a disincarnate human, somebody who is connected to all that they are, to source, soul, creation. And then when they come back, those things that you can talk to that have information that can, um, you know, they're, they're, they're connected. They're not just a, a shell of a bee walking around. So, this is the service that we do to cross over ghost waywards. It is a service because it is. Sorry, my internet keeps cutting up using my phone internet. Um, because I thought the hotels was too unreliable. Actually, at a conference here. Um, so with. Um, where was I at? So. Um, with a ghost a wayward, when, um, when you die and you choose to stay here, you have to take energy from people or places. Um, when a ghost or a wayward comes into your field, usually a person 
will not necessarily know it, but if you can watch for the subtleties, you can feel it. Now for me, I program myself to sneeze every time a ghost or a wayward comes into my field. Um, and now I'm actually not in the Chicago Pyramid House. We're here in Rapid City, South Dakota at a radionics conference. And I just always rent this conference room to, to set up in. Um, so a ghost or a wayward, again, it has, it has that same personality. It, it is the shell of a being. And okay, I remember what I was saying was that it is a service to cross these beings over because basically a ghost or a wayward is a part of the soul, a part of their soul. And it is what is carrying around all of the experience. And what are we here for? We are here to experience and bring that back to the soul for wisdom, distilling the information, the light and information from a lifetime and experience turning it into wisdom. That is what our soul is, wisdom. And so this lifetime, um, it is a part of the soul. And so crossing that person over is a huge service. Um, and it doesn't have to be difficult as we'll get in with the tools. But first we'll go into how you actually would cross over a ghost or a wayward in the traditional method. One is to go into that sacred space of the heart that we did in the beginning because you want to stay out of fear, knowing that they cannot harm you. But what they can do for people, as I was starting to say, is, is that they can bring up emotions. They can influence your thoughts. So a lot of times you will have emotions or thoughts. That is how they get energy from you. That is how they feed off of people is, is that they create energy through emotions. So when a human has all this emotional energy, anger, uh, fear, whatever it is, they receive that energy from that. And that is how, you know, a ghost can amass enough energy to be, you know, like people talk about polter, poltergeist, which is basically just, you know, we've seen some ghosts that just appear to be these big, big beings. And they're just like, it's just because they've amassed, they've been feeding off of people. And these are some of the more dense consciousness beings. Um, and they just feed off of people. And of course, you know, people that will go to the, a bar, let's say, ghosts will love, ghosts love to go to bars because they can easily feed off of people there. Um, people who are, are um, incapacitated, they can feed off their emotions. Um, and again, they, they can influence your thoughts. Um, a lot of times when you have a wayward attachment, you'll, you'll have like thoughts of, you know, just fearful things like, oh man, my, I just saw a vision of my kid stepping out into traffic, you know, stuff like that. That is how they can influence you to create the emotions. Um, and not all aren't like that. Some of these are your great grandma who's still a sweet little old lady. Um, so how you cross over a ghost or a wayward is in the beginning, I would always call in Archangel Michael to help to open up a portal. I would always imagine on a wall, this, this big opening, opening up. And when you do any kind of energy work, it is being in the heart space, using your imagination and visualization. So I would imagine, I would visualize that opening. Well, at first I would ask, actually ask Archangel Michael to do the opening for me. And then you would just simply talk to them. On our website, there is under Ghost Busting 101, there is a script that I would use, um, which basically you were just talking them into crossing over, just telling them, hey, there's no hell, there's no judgment, there's no fear, um, you know, cross over here. And um, a lot of them would choose not to. And so a lot of times I would call in Archangel Raphael to step in and to do healing work with them. So then they would then choose to step over. Um, so it got to be, you know, and this has been 11 plus years that I've been doing this. And it got to be at a point to where I was trying to make a tool, you know, one of the tensor tools to cross these guys over because 
I would, you know, I would go into a store and I would just get all of them in my field and I'd have to tell them to wait out in the car for me until I could come out and cross them over. So they, um, I was always looking for a tool. Never could find a tool. I made a sphere one time, a dragon ball as we called it, and it basically um, would house them until I would go to it every day and open up the light in there to cross them over. But it was still, wasn't doing the work. It wasn't until we, um, so we were always doing the, the, the long version of talking them in cr to crossing over. So now that if you don't see them, but if you feel and you sense, you're like, oh man, something doesn't feel right. You know, I feel like somebody's watching me in the shower. You know, whatever it is that you get that sense or that feeling or kids will come and tell you about it. Um, or your pets act strange and look around. Then all you, then what you would do is you would call in Archangel Michael to open up a portal on the wall and you would just say, hey, let's go, let's cross over. You can use the script that I have on Ghostbusting 101 on our resources page to talk them over, you know, to talk them into going over. But once the golden fire came along, so that's why this Ghostbusting um, video is it's in conjunction with the tool sale that we have going on right now um, and it's October 28th and this is going on just for another day I believe but it's a sale on certain tools such as the golden fire generators now when we received that sacred heart activation which is the golden fire it is something that the soul comes in to do um, the sacred heart is not the sacred space of the heart where we move to, but the sacred heart is, can be seen as that trifold gold flame heart that you always see Jesus and Mary depicted with, but this is beyond religion. This has to do with the human. That the sacred heart is something that when you activate it, the soul steps in to activate the sacred heart. So when a ghost or a wayward comes into the field of a golden fire generator, and again, a tensor field generator creates a field of influence that goes out like a sunshine effect. The golden fire generators have a two and a half mile sphere of influence. So when a ghost or a wayward comes into this field, that remembrance of the sacred heart is there. The soul comes in to activate the sacred heart and just automatically takes them across. So it's the golden fire that sacred heart activation, which is what is crossing over a ghost wayward, having their soul come in to do it. So then we don't have to sit there and talk them into it um, and, and do healing work with them and, and, and all of that and be their counselor or whatever. We just simply, we don't do a thing. We just hold space. Now, when a person has the sacred heart activation, then you should not have any ghost waywards that come in attached to you because again, when they come into your field, the soul has a remembrance of the sacred heart as does that ghost wayward. The soul comes in, do the activation, takes them across. So the golden fire generator is the one tool that you can just set it and forget it. It just does the work. So you don't have to do anything with it. The other tool that in the golden fire generators come in a variety of sizes on the website. Then we have another frequency of generator, which is the Divine I Am. This one as well contains the golden fire. So even though the, gold, the, the tools that we have on sale are like the golden fire and light wands, the large and the small, the two ge the generators and the wings of talk, in reality, any golden fire tool can do this process and any of the newer tools created after the golden fire, such as the, um, the divine I am, such as the divine I am generators. These also contain that golden fire so that they will also cross over a ghost wayward. So the generators are a simple sit in and forget it. Another tool is, well, we'll wait on the wings to talk. Another tool is the golden fire and light wands. These are the ones that um, we do light anchoring with. So there is a video on our resources page. If you go to light anchoring, there is a bunch of information on creating these columns of light. And you 
basically the videos will walk you through an attunement and an activation. The attunement is to the ancient etheric tool that this is connected to. Um, but the activation part of it is activating the sacred heart. So that is where you can find this, you know, you can go actually and Google the sacred heart activation. We have a bunch of videos on YouTube of going through the sacred heart activation. But also on that light anchoring page, there is a video, the newest one from still a few years ago, is light anchoring 3.0. And on that newer light anchoring video, it also gives you that activation of the sacred heart. And then when you use these particular tools, and you don't need the physical tool, actually on the video, we give you the attunement to the quantum tool, to the etheric tool of what this is, the golden fire and light wand. And so you don't actually need this physical tool to anchor the columns of light. They're helpful. Um, they, they're a tool of attention. So when you anchor a column of light and you have that sacred heart activation, that column of light also contains the golden fire. So then with that column of light, you can anchor it into cemeteries or um, old buildings that you know that are haunted. Um, and you can anchor these columns of light in those places. And it will just cross over the, the ghosts, the waywards that are in that space. So that is a simple and easy process and one that you don't have to own any tools for, anchoring the columns of light. And it's huge. I mean, it does so much good. You can anchor it in a cell phone towers to uh, basically hijack a cell phone tower grid. And um, the cell phone towers will then be producing uh, the frequencies of love and gratitude that will be producing a beneficial energy. The last tool that we have on our Ghostbuster sale is the Wings of Talk. Now, the Wings of Talk is one that, um, it's one of those set it and forget it tools. It creates a field about 200 feet across, and you can just certainly sit this in the space and it will do the work. We actually created this original Wings of Talk. We have a new version that's coming out here in the next week. Um, but the Wings of Talk was originally created for energy workers um, that were having problems crossing over ghosts, waywards, and also clearing entities and closing portal vortexes, um, doing a lot of that work, which also the golden fire and light wands can do. But they wanted a tool that was simple and easy to use for the environment, for people. Um, the Wings of Talk was the one that came through. So this tool here, again, it's something that will just sit it and forget it, and it'll cover your environment about 200 feet across, and it'll cross over ghosts, waywards. Well, you can also use this just like the quantum tool of the golden fire and light wand. So if you go to the Wings of Talk product page, there is a video and there's an attunement, an activation to this tool to where, again, you don't need the physical tool. You can use this one to create a column of light that will hold the same energetic space as the physical tool. So there is an easy way for everybody to cross over ghost waywards. Um, I put a wings of talk in my daughter's backpack. I used to put in the golden fire generators, the smaller ones that are more sturdy. Um, but anymore, I just put a wings of talk in her backpack for when she goes to school because, you know, there's always energetic attachments. And I just call a wayward a ghost an energetic attachment. There's, you find them in schools all the time. And so my daughter is so sensitive to those. And so just carrying the wings of talk in her backpack covers her and clears all the ghost waywards and her school. Um, so that's a huge thing, huge, huge thing, because they can certainly affect people, ghost waywards. And again, it is a service to assist these beings across. Um, so, and if you have any questions over anything that we've covered here, please do drop it over here in the questions tab. Um, but otherwise, that's, that's the quick, simple, and easy of it is um, you can do the short, the, the long method of crossing ghost waivers over. You can do the columns of light, or you can do the sit it and forget it tools. It just depends on, you know, where you're at and what it is that you're comfortable doing. And of course, I always encourage people to use 
the wings of talk or the golden fire and light wands because it is a self-empowering tool and it is something that you can utilize everywhere you can be driving down the street and just feel some funk in a abandoned old house and simply drop a column of light in there and then when you do you are doing a huge service to everybody um it is crossing over the ghost waywards and doing wonderful wonderful work so i do implore you all to do this work and you know and it's something that you can teach your kids too because i tell you kids are kids are so sensitive especially the kids these days they are amazing amazing critters and so um they are again they'll be affected more because they can see them and they sense them so if you don't want to put you know a 222 dollars tool in the person's backpack you can go online and learn how to use it energetically instead so we do have the tools not only the physical ones but the consciousness tools for everybody to use to do this work um all right let's see just going over here to our questions tab if I add in a Lemurian crystal inside the golden fire generator, what will this do? Well, as far as for crossing over ghost waywards, it's not going to, you know, make a, a difference there because it's just that golden fire. But of course, when you utilize, um, you know, crystals or other energy tools in your generators, it'll broadcast that energy and information through that field. Um, let's see. And then another question, um, how do you know when the waywards have crossed over? Do you need to close the portal if it has been opened? Okay, so if you're doing it the, 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 the original way of either you create, a portal or you create a portal of light to source, to home, on, on the wall, or else you ask Archangel Michael to come in and do it, then yes, totally when you're done. And um, how you feel, how you know when you cross them over is you can feel it. You can feel when they are there and in the room. Sometimes there's a temperature change. Sometimes you get the goosebumps. Sometimes it's a heaviness. Um, you know, there are physical feelings that you can feel if you don't have your sensory feelings going um, that can tell you if they're there. And you'll just feel a shift. What I mean by a shift is you'll feel like either a lightness or... Um, you know, you, you, you'll you just sense that something changed. And that's when you know that they've either crossed over or they've just hightailed it out of there. Because again, they have free will choice. So, you know, doing it the long version is not as reliable as it is with having your sacred heart activated or else using any of these tools to bring through that sacred heart activation for the ghost wayward as well. Um, and then let's see, hey, Gary, do you use the same technique to release dragons trapped under institutions? So that was another thing that um, we used to do was to um, basically we, we would use columns of light for, for releasing beings that are trapped in a space, whether it is um, whether you find a, a space where there is an intersecting of geomagnetic lines, that creates that vortex that will hold ghosts into that place where they can't get out. That is the best place to use a column of light. So for any beings that are trapped in a space, energetically stuck there, the columns of light are the best ways to do that because that will not only clear that, but it will ensure that any others that come along, that they will have their exit out as well. Let's see, I think we have some more questions here. So, um, the question about the real dense ones, do they take longer? Do the tools eventually cross them over? So, you know, the, the ones that have been, you know, that are just a massed energy that they, that they're just, you know, sometimes they present to us as like entities, which are just, um, 
you know, they're not disincarnate humans. These entities aren't, they're just beings that are not in this physical plane. Um, so sometimes, you know, we'll run into a ghost or wayward that just seems so big and massive and just, you know, rar. And, you know, it's, um, for them, sometimes it does take a little bit more coaxing. Um, and using the wands is a great way because if you know them and know that they're there, you just imagine creating a bubble around them. Um, you can also imagine if you can see them finding their heart and within their heart, seeing their light, their soul's fire, and just imagining expanding their light, imagining their light expanding and connecting into the earth and connecting into their soul. And that will shift the biggest, baddest beings. That's how we shift the biggest, baddest beings is we see their light, we connect them and ground them, and then their soul steps in and then they clear. Um, and then, so do the tools eventually cross, cross them or, or any of those over? And yes, so basically like with the golden fire generators, if if those beings, they still have free will choice. They still have free will choice. If they're, if they're like, no, soul, not for me, not today, I'm staying here. I actually know quite a few of those beings. Like in Deadwood, South Dakota, there is a haunted hotel and they enjoy being there. And no talking in the world will get them to cross. Uh, you know, having a generator there, they, they're like, no, I'm staying here. And so, yeah, free will choice, they can still stay. But when you have a golden fire generator or any of the tensor field generators, um, like or the divine I am, basically it's creating a space there that is not in their resonance because it is a higher resonance space. And so if a ghost or a wayward does not want to cross over when they're in these fields and they're just choosing not to, they'll leave, they'll, they'll, they'll exit the space because they don't like that vibration. They don't like that light and they don't like their soul always coming in and bugging them to cross over. So they will leave, they'll exit the space if, if they choose not to. But I would say uh, 90 98 percent 90 plus percent of the time 98 percent that the ghost or the wayward would cross over um right then and there um so as far as for if anybody has any more questions on you know just the the simple ghost wayward stuff uh please do drop it in um, Renard's acting, asking about um, doing soul retrieval and and soul aspects and such. And yes, totally, these tools are programmed. They they have within their capacity to to um, to bring back pieces of ourselves. Um, soul retrievals. Um, another quick story too, just in case anybody has any other questions before we go, is that. Um, a friend of mine took me on a past life regression once, which was kind of interesting. I had to try it once and went back to a time where it was just a, a cabin in some hills, some mountains like the Swiss Alps or something. And I was like a farmer in this field and there was somebody else living there. And I saw myself get killed by this group of horsemen that came in and just hacked me up and I died and I was still there. And I got to cross myself over, which was which was kind of cool. So I, I helped myself cross over. Um, interesting. And um, yeah, we would see a lot of wild stuff out there in the ethers. Oh yeah, there's somebody who's mentioning the Stan the Stanley Hotel in Estes. Yeah, um, I've actually gone there to do clearing to in uh, in. In Colorado, there's the Stanley Hotel that um, was it. I think it was a Stephen King movie done there, and that's that place was super haunted. So yeah, we actually went in there, and there was a few beings that just weren't letting everybody else go, and we cleared them so that everybody else could go home. So there was still all the shining. Um, 
yeah, there was still quite a few beings who, who were there at the time who just said, no, nah, you know, we want to hang out here. Um, and so we were like, all right, yeah, pretty well choice. But that was before we had the golden fire. I would be very curious to go back there again. And um, so if anybody is near Estes there in Colorado uh, at the Stanley Hotel, go anchor a column of light into that place. And, you know, you'd probably be doing a huge service for people, uh, for beings. Let's see. Yeah, some more questions. Can a person send entities to another person? Um, so an entity attachment is, is something that... Um, it, it, it's a it's a choice it's it's usually a choice of so nothing can happen to you that basically your soul doesn't agree upon that isn't part of your creation um so you you it's kind of like a curse that you know if you if you have a curse in this lifetime and somebody puts a curse on you you only receive it if you believe it otherwise if you're like, nah, no thanks, not for me, I don't carry that, then you don't carry that. And so really you cannot send um, an entity attachment to another person. Um, you know, we've, we've never seen that, but yet um, when we start dealing with entities, that's, that's kind of a whole different rabbit hole that we go into versus just dealing with just ghost waywards. Um, another question, have you found any music that helps such as the solfeggio frequencies or other frequencies? And, you know, no, I have not, have not, um, played with that one. Um, Samson dropping columns of light near the Stanley hotel every couple of weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Samson, our, our water shaman who goes out that way. Um, yeah, so yeah, entities are a whole different ball game, and a lot of those have to do with soul contracts and things like that. But as far as the ghost waywards, um, you know, it's it's something that at one time there used to be so many more on this planet just because people weren't doing the work, and you know, it has just become more of a commonplace knowing, and you know, since the internet too people have actually been crossing over ghost waywards a lot more. You know, it used to be that people would just tell them, oh, just get out of here. You know, it's kind of like how a Catholic priest would do it. You know, demon be gone, you know, and people would just kick them out of the house, basically. And, um, you know, which is not, it's, it's, it's a disservice. So, you know, once you start doing this, um, it, it's something that you'll continue to do. But again, if you have your sacred heart activated and you have that in your field, you're just going to be doing the work automatically. So um, is the veil thinner on Halloween or just myth? You know, yes. So there, there is um, that space that goes between... Um, here, you know, the plane that we live in and the plane that goes waywards inhabit, there it is it is almost like that's that is closer together at that time. Um, you know, like how they have, you know, the day of the dead and and other things, Sam Hain, all of that based around um, you know, the veils being thinner. All right. Let's see. I have a samurai that hangs around me, but I cannot tell if it is a guide or a wayward. How would I be able to tell utilizing the tools? So, it feels more like a spirit so, and not a disincarnate human. Um, basically, if there's a ghost or a wayward, it's not going to stay hanging around with you, especially, you know, I, Renard, I know you have a lot of the tools, you know, and one of the pyramid, you know, the pyramid setup and all that. So 
you know, if there's a ghost or a wayward, it's not going to hang around the space um, because it is creating a space to where they'll either decide to take that leap of faith and cross over or else they'll just exit your area. So, all right. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. And again, there is um, more information on our ghost busting um, on website under resources, there is the ghost busting where there's more information. And um, yeah, so anyway, thank you again. And again, this is a huge service. Just remember not to go into fear with any of these beings because they can't harm you. And some of them could be your relatives. Maybe some of them could be you in another lifetime. You never know. All right. Take care of you all, and we'll talk to you soon.